CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. All of us listening are part of the age of science. The wonders that have been wrought in this century are truly beyond belief. But there is a price we have to pay for all the benefits science has brought us. Every wonder drug has its side effects, sometimes more catastrophic to the individual than the benefit. But what miracle can create life and, at the same time, destroy it as we know it? This is the terrifying tale I bring to you. Pop? Mom, what is it? I never saw you Susan, so... Susan, this is very difficult to tell you, but... No, Harry, no. Not... Not now. Sarah, she's got to know. No, what? What's going on around here? <laughs> Mom? Mom, it's right by you. Why? Why don't you answer the phone? Don't, Sarah. Susan, honey, no one is going to answer that call. Our mystery drama, The Unholy Miracle, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Mandel Kramer and Barbara Somers. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Whatever kind of shirt you're into, get into an arrow. Hey, Jim. That's a fantastic wool shirt. Oh, thanks. It's uh, an arrow. An arrow? Hmm. Whatever kind of shirt you want, Arrow's got it. I love that turtleneck Hank's wearing. I bought it for him. It's an arrow. Whatever kind of shirt you're into, get into an arrow. When it comes to shirts, things are changing. But men are still changing into Arrow. Arrow gives you every style and all the confidence you expect from an Arrow. That shirt looks great with your suit. Sure, it's an Arrow. Whatever kind of shirt you're into, get into an Arrow. Whatever kind of shirt you want, Arrow's got it. Arrow makes all kinds of shirts for all kinds of men. That's why we're known as America's shirt maker. so new, yet recently it has grabbed the headlines. Clone. By definition, a group of organisms derived from a single individual by various types of asexual reproduction. An older and more established word might be helpful as you follow this strange story. Parthenogenesis. Development of an egg without fertilization. Is it feasible that right here, right now, in our times, an age-old miracle could happen. Hello? Is this the home of Mr. and Mrs. Kemp? That's right. Uh, this is Mrs. Kemp speaking. I was wondering if I might talk, please, to your, um, your daughter. Susan? She's not home at the minute. Can I take a message? I, um, I don't believe so. I will want to talk to her personally. Could I leave a number where she might call me? The number is 555-4446. Well, can I tell her who's calling? The name would mean nothing. I will be the only person to answer the phone. It is urgent that she make the call. Just a minute. I... Hello? Hello? Hi, darling. I'm home. I think I got everything except the parsley. Now, why would they be out of parsley? I don't know, Harry. Who's on the phone? What? I, I don't know. Hey, wait a minute, sir. What's the matter? Uh, let me put these groceries down. Ah, what's the matter? What's got you going, sir? I don't know. Oh, Harry. Hold me. I, I'm scared. Scared? Sarah, darling, what on earth do you have to be scared of? I'm not scared for me. 
It's Susan. Well, I can't think of a thing in the world that ought to worry us about our daughter. Can't you? Oh, it's, it's all my fault, Harry. You were right all those years ago. I should have paid more attention to you. But I, I, I was just so desperate to have my baby. Is it... Is it something to do with the adoption? I, I have to say it again. I don't know. But... But I'm afraid so. Yes. You better tell me about the phone call. It was a woman. A foreign woman. She had some kind of an accent. She, she left a number for Susan to call. All she said was that it was urgent. Well, you don't think it could possibly be... Yes, I do. It finally caught up with us. She had an accent. I'm almost sure it was... It was Russian. All right, Sarah. Suppose it has caught up with us finally. What are we going to do? I don't know. Nineteen years ago, we decided to take this risk. Well, it's different now. This time, Susan has her own rights. If we tell her... We have to. The woman's going to call again. The truth is going to have to come out. Look, darling, you're just not thinking straight. If it's a crank call, okay, but... Suppose it is genuine. That it's Susan's real mother. Oh, well, how could it be? After 19 years. How did she find us? Sue's picture's been in the paper because of being elected homecoming queen at college. Well, Harry, how could she recognize her after all these years? The best way to find out would be to call her back. You said she left a number. It's Susan she wants to talk to. What about? I don't think she'd tell us. It's, it's what she might want to tell Susan that worries me more. Honey, let's sit down so we can talk this out. All right, Harry. Oh, we should have told her long ago. Why were we such cowards? Because we loved her too much. We pretended she was our own flesh and blood. Now God is punishing us for that. We should have told her the truth. When? At ten months old? Later. When she was old enough to understand. We've given Susan as much as any parents could. You have, anyway. And so have you. I don't think we have anything to reproach ourselves with there, that... Susan will have any complaints about us, except... Except? Except that we never told her the whole truth. That she wasn't ours. Look, Sarah, we, we've made a terrible mistake. I, I hope it doesn't come back to haunt us. Or oh, worse still... Susan. I think I'd better call that woman. Why? Just to head her off, to stop her. Stop her from what? That's what I don't know. What's that number, Sarah? I don't think you should call her. I have to before I do something that we should have done long ago. Harry! Look, I'll put it another way. If Susan has to know the truth, it had better be from us than from someone else. No matter who she is. And if one phone call could mean that we don't have to open up, then I'm all in favor of making it. All right, Harry. If you're sure. Here's the number. <laughs> Supposing we admit that you are her real mother, what earthly purpose can be served for you to turn up now? That is between me and my child. You're talking about a child that you abandoned nearly 20 years ago. There were reasons then why I had no choice. Look, I am not unsympathetic, but Susan is 20 years old now. Why do you have to declare yourself now? There are many reasons why. What purpose will be served in telling our daughter that she is not our daughter? I don't think you quite understand about... About Susan, as you call her. I have to let her know. It is a necessity that she is not a normal girl. She is something very special. Oh, she's very special, all right. I'm with you that far. But to say Susan is not normal is, 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 is just ludicrous. Nobody could be more natural and normal than Susan. I am afraid I have to disagree with you. My daughter is something quite I demand that you have her call me. And supposing I refuse, whoever you are... Then I will reach her by other means. Because I want her to be able to take advantage of her birthright. Her birthright? Who is she? The daughter of an emperor? A king? What? Who are you? My name is Natasha Baronchev. I was married to Dr. Nikita Baronchev. The name I means little to you. But I promise you... Once I am reunited with my daughter, it will be a name known throughout the whole world. I have nothing more to say. 
Have my daughter call, or I shall make arrangements to contact her myself. What is it, Harry? She hung up on me. Do you think it's Susan's real mother? Sarah, I'm afraid it may be. There's just no way we're going to be able to keep this from Sue. If, if anyone tells her the truth, it had better be us first. Hey, Mom! I'm home! Oh, oh, no. That's Susan now. Well, we might as well bite the bullet now, Sarah. Hey, anybody home yet? Dad? I'm here in the living room, Susan. Mom's here, too. <laughs> oh, great. Because I got some real super news for you, two. Well, that's nice, baby. What? No reaction from you, Papa? Well, oh, well, I, I, uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to react to yet. How about being the father of the bride? Susan, huh? <laughs> he didn't. Uh -huh. Bob Randall? That's right. Just cast your eyes on this if you don't think he's serious. Wow. <laughs> hey, that diamond's got to be two or three carats. It was his mother's engagement ring. Oh, darling, how wonderful. <laughs> Of all the ones around, he was my pick. Mm -hmm. That's the way it turned out for me, too. Well, he had my vote. I mean, I don't dig his family much, but I guess I could be house trained. Oh, you can't blame them. They're just too used to money to know much about living. Do his parents know about this yet? Are you kidding? It's going to take a little time and a heck of a lot of persuasion to convince the Randolphs I'm good enough. Mm -hmm. Bob will handle that. They're awfully rich. And you know society... Have you actually met them? Oh, sure. Well, not as a prospective daughter-in-law. Mm. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. I know they'll look me over with a high-powered microscope. Okay, so they won't find any blue blood. Or maybe all that much to recommend me. But thanks to you two darlings, they won't find out anything they can wash me out on. Hey, what'd I do? Knock you out with the news? I thought you'd have seen it coming. Well, oh, maybe we did, honey. It just... There's some other news floating around. Oh, can it wait for my big celebration? I, uh, I don't think it can, Sue. What's the matter, Dad? I never saw you so... And Mom? <sighs> for crying out loud, what is it? Honey... Honey, honey, this is very difficult, but... No, Harry, no. Sarah, Not now. Sarah. There isn't anything that has to be settled tonight. Let's wait for tomorrow before... What's going on around here? Mom, um, it's right next to you. Why... Why don't you answer the phone? Of course, the phone will have to be answered. But how serious is it when all is said and done? These are well-balanced people. And the secret that Susan is adopted and not their real child is a difficult subject to handle, but not insuperable. Except that Susan apparently is a special child. Something appallingly extraordinary. Unique beyond belief. I shall return shortly with Act Two. Phone, the hidden tyrant that rules our lives. The sound of its bell can spell disaster or success, birth or death, good news or bad news. Every time we answer, it's an adventure. Except the expected call for good or for evil. And when the expected news is bad, how strong the temptation is to use our only strength against it, not to answer. What goes on here? Look, if no one wants to answer, it's I will. No, no, Sue. No one's going to answer that. Daddy, what's got into you two? That could be Bob. He said he might call. Well, I'll... I'll check on it. Hello? This is Natasha Baronchev. Has my daughter returned? Not yet. I'll have her call you. It wasn't Bob. But it was someone for me, wasn't it? Yes. Then why didn't you put me on? Because I have to talk to you first. Oh, I know that tone of voice. <laughs> That's old heavy father speaking. <laughs> what am I in Dutch for? You're not the one in Dutch, Susan. It's us. 
Gee, Mom, Papa, what is it? Something's wrong. Real bad. Is it one of you? Oh, you're not sick. Oh, please don't let it be that. No, 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 no. Nothing like that. Sit down with us, darling. I'm sure. Oh, gosh, please don't look so unhappy. It can't be anything so bad as long as you two are all right. Harry, you want to tell her, or, or shall I? Maybe you'd better if you feel up to it. I don't. But I will. Susan. Darling. You are not our child, Susan. What? We adopted you, Sue. When you were ten months old. I don't believe it. I, no, I, I don't believe it. All these years, that's... It's the truth, baby. Harry and I... We always wanted a child, but, but the Lord didn't seem to feel we should have one. I tried and tried, but I never could carry one full term. And then Harry had to go away to war. And, you know, he stayed with the army afterwards, and I went to Germany and some of the other places with him. And, and there was Korea, and finally we were home again. And, and then I was too old. What chance I had, if ever, was gone. And I still wanted a baby. I wanted to... So did I, Sue. But the way I was kept moving around, I mean, there was just no, no, no chance to adopt. Then, suddenly, there I was, out of the service, and we were home and settled, and I had a new job and security, and we began to try again. We thought we might get a Korean baby, but that fell through. And I had a friend who, who put me in touch with a doctor who, who knew that there was a baby, a, a Russian baby, whose mother had been able to escape but whose father had been imprisoned. And she had no resources to care for you. She, she was desperate for money, so she wanted to, to have you adopted. And that was me? That was you. How old was I? Ten months. So I, I wasn't speaking Russian yet. You did say I was Russian? That's what we were told. You mean... You didn't know anything at all about me, except I was a baby? That's all we ever wanted. Oh, Susan. Susan, can you ever forgive us? For what? For not telling you when when you needed to know. We thought and thought about it and planned to do it so often. But then, somehow at the last moment, we just never got around to it. I, I, I'm just knocked off my pins for the moment. Just answer me one question. It never came up before, so why does it have to now? The phone call before, remember? That's what the whole hang-up was about. Hey, wait a minute. You don't mean my real mother turned up? We don't know for certain that she has. Oh, but then why did you have to tell me? Because this woman insists on talking to you. Now, we have no idea about what. But we had to prepare you. Didn't we, Sue? I... I guess so. Oh, of course you did. And, Mom, it, it's just a little hard to adjust to, but... Oh, there's one thing I, I want to tell you. What, baby? It'll never make any difference to me. It's just something you told me. But, honestly, it doesn't mean anything. I'll still be as much a part of you, a, a part of both of you, as... As though I... Oh, you're still my mom and pop. Nothing can change that. Oh, my darling. My darling. We don't have to tell you that goes both ways. I love you. I love you both. And don't you ever kid yourself that's going to change. Now, what do I have to do about this other thing? You mean the woman on the phone? Yes. Well, she left a number where you could call her. What do you think? Should, should I? Well, maybe, since we have everything cleared away now, maybe you'd better. But, but why? I don't even know her. I'd be embarrassed to talk to her, and what could it change? Twenty, but, okay, nineteen years ago, she, she walked out on me, got rid of me. What do I owe her? And what could she want from me? I don't know. Still, it might be better if you phoned. But what could she do? I mean, it's not a legal thing, is it? I don't see how it could be, but she did say that it was something urgent. 
Susan, I... I talked to this... This lady, and... I think you should see her. Or at least talk to her on the phone. I don't want to have anything to do with her. She sure didn't with me for all this time. Well, I still think we should talk to her. Or, or, or you. And no. I don't, I, I don't want to have anything to do with her. Having talked with this Madame Baronchev... I don't think that it's altogether your choice, Sue, whether you see her. Because one way or another, she's determined that you're going to meet. Okay. Give me the number so I can call her. Here. Here it's written on this pad. Thanks, Mom. Well, here I go, head first. Death or glory? Hey, hey, wait a minute. Where do I have to see her? Wherever you want. Could I ask her to come here? So why not? I wish you would if she'll come. Maybe whatever it is I can just be done over the phone. That's what I hope, anyway. Hello? Uh, Mrs. Um, Baranchev? Yes? This is Susan Kemp speaking. Oh, my darling. My baby. My <laughs> own, my Katerina. Uh, look, Madam uh, Baranchev, um, you uh, wanted me to call you. I want you to call me what I am, Babushka. I am your mother. That's, uh, that's a little difficult to believe. I mean, where have you been all these years? Oh, but that is what I have to tell you. Oh, so much to tell you, my little one. And what a great future we are to have, you and I. You will come and see me at once, no? I must talk to you. Uh, couldn't we just do it on the phone? Not possible. First... Because you have to see me to know that I am your mother. You mean you have proof? I have the best proof in the world. What? You will see. All right. But you'll have to come here, to my house. Very well. I know the address. I will be there within 15 minutes. Madame Baron. Something wrong, sir? She hung up. Is she coming here? Yes. She'll be here in 15 minutes, she said. She said she has proof? Proof that she's your real mother? Yes. What proof? She said I, I would see for myself. Mom. Pop, I'm scared. I don't want her to be my mother. I don't want to see her. You want me to talk to her first? Would you? Sure. But if she really is... If you're satisfied she really is, then I'll talk to her. Madame Baranchev, I'm Harry Kent. I was expecting my daughter. I think... You and I should have a few words first. Won't you come in? My daughter is here. Susan, yes, she's here. She asked me to see you first. Very well. I shall come in. Thank you. May I take your coat? Uh, no, thank you. You are the uh, foster father. Yes. You want proof that I am who I say I am. That and a couple of other things that I would like to discuss. We will see about that. First, the proof. I have, of course, papers, birth certificate, so on, but they are in Russian. Here, you may examine them if you wish. These, of course, are photostats. If it will help, here is my name. Natasha Drusha Baronchev. Here, my husband's. Dr. Nikita Baronchev. Here, the baby's name. Katerina Semyonovna Baronchev. You will see, she was three and a half kilos, about seven pounds, six ounces or so. Marriage license and so forth, so forth. You may keep them for what they are worth. When the time comes, I will offer you undeniable proof that Susan is my child. Isn't it here now? Not quite. What were the uh, other things you wished to discuss? Well, for example... Why do you come back to claim Susan now? Where have you been all this time? Where I have been is a long story and doesn't matter for the moment. Why do I come to claim Katarina? I will tell you. 
Because a way has opened up for me to do for my child what I have been unable to do for all these years. I can make her rich and famous. I can establish her as the unique, only person in the world that she is. I don't quite understand. What about her father? Dr. Baronchev is dead. But he has no place in this. She was not her father. Then who was? No one, Mr. Kemp. Do you know what parthenogenesis is? Well, uh, in, in, a, in a general way, but not, not exactly. Well, let I... me give you a definition. It is the development of a living cell without fertilization. What are you trying to say? Twenty years ago. My husband was the foremost expert in Russia on cloning. The creation of a full organism from a living cell. I was very young. Only 18 when I married. And Nikita was much older. I wanted a child. But he could not give me one in the ordinary way. So I begged and begged till he agreed to try to make me one. I chose a daughter, so Katerina, the child you call Susan, was made from a single cell of my body, and I carried her inside of me till she was born. My child, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. I am her, and she is me. She is me. In every way, completely. And now... I shall prove everything I have said to you. At the moment she said these last words, Madame Baronchev removed the wide-brimmed hat she has chosen to keep wearing with a veil that had concealed her face. And Harry Kemp, absolutely dumbfounded, found himself looking at what was the identical twin of the child he had brought up for 20 years as his daughter, Susan. I shall return shortly with Act Three. As the first shock wore off, Harry Kemp could begin to see that there were faint differences. The woman Baranchev was, after all, 40 years old. Her hairstyle was a little more severe than Susan's, but it was the same rich auburn color, so hard to duplicate. There was no longer any reason to doubt Susan was her child. But the other, that was staggering, incredible, and terrifying. Madame Baronchev, you, you can't mean... You, I mean, you're not going to tell Susan what you just told me. Why not? Because it's... It, it's unnatural. It, it, it's an impossible burden to lay on a youngster's shoulders. I don't understand you. She is now with me, the most special of women in the whole world. But that's just the point. No girl of 20 wants to be that special. It's, it's like being a freak. And good Lord, the whole idea makes me sick with fear, Madame Baranchev. Sick with fear. Doesn't it terrify you that more and more we keep interfering with the natural and produce more and more artificial things? If at last we start tampering with the life process, then it is the end of life as we know it. It's the end of everything, the ultimate anarchy. Ridiculous. Biologists have been interfering, as you call it, with the life process since the beginning of this century. Plants first, then animals. Then my husband, over 20 years ago with mammals, and eventually a human being. But because he worked for the government, it had to be kept very quiet. I was afraid they would use Katerina as a guinea pig. That's why I fled from Russia. They stopped my husband... But they let us go, because they did not know the truth. What happened to him? They made an example of him, because he had tried to defect. He was arrested, tried and condemned to Siberia, lost, buried, never heard from again. After I had placed Katerina for adoption to keep her safe, I went back to Russia to try to help him. I myself was imprisoned for 15 years. You survived them very well. Outwardly, perhaps. When my husband died, they let me go. Since then, I have been searching for my baby. The last week, I pick up the paper, and there was her picture. I'm sorry for you, Madame Baranchev. But I'm not going to let you tell her that. 
Not what you've told me. Why? First, I've no way of knowing if it's true. It is true. I can tell you the whole process. First, some skin from me. And one cell isolated. Then, one of my ova. Part of the nucleus was removed. And the cell from my own body introduced. The ova was implanted inside me. And it grew full term to a child. A spontaneous baby produced wholly by me. With no father. My daughter, Mr. Kemp, not yours, not anyone's, but mine. If it is true, even more strongly, I tell you, I don't want her to know. You have no right to keep the truth from her. It can make her a millionaire. And you, of course. I want some return for the agony my life has been. But not at Susan's expense. Not while I'm alive. What do you mean, expense? She might want to be rich. Not to be a freak. Now, look, she has a young man that she wants to marry. She's in love. This, this, this would ruin her plans. Mr. Kemp, if you attempt to keep me apart from my daughter, I will go to the press. I will force the issue. You do that and I'll kill you. What? Look, I'm not a violent man, but I have been a soldier, and I'm fighting for Susan's life, for her sanity. I am not going to let you tear her apart. You understand? Why can't you leave her alone? Because I am fighting for my life and my sanity too. Because I want some of the good things instead of the hell that I have lived through. But uh, I, uh, I am not without some humanity. I will not push you further today. I will give you one week to prepare Susan, as you call her, and to come to your senses. And then I will be back with my lawyer and others. I warn you, one week. It's the most awful thing I've ever heard, Harry. I couldn't ever have told Susan. I couldn't bring myself to even suggest such a horrendous possibility. And when she comes back after a week? Well, I have that much time at least to prove that the whole thing is false. I've got to, Sarah. We have got to keep this thing out of the papers. It would be the end of Susan and Bob Randolph's relationship. It would be the end of Susan. It would break her up. I know it would. But, Harry, what can we do? Now, look, I, I, I've been thinking, Sarah. Thank heavens for the army. I think I have one chance. Jim Stein. I know he's a good friend, but how could Jim... Now, look, Jim... he came back a full colonel. Now, he was, he was a big cheese in intelligence, but undercover. Now, for all I know, he, he may still be in it. I just hope he's in the country now. now I'm going to call him right now while Susan's out. Now, sorry to drag you up to Washington, Harry, old buddy. But you got your finger in a hot one. Well, you said you might be able to help. I did? How? Well, I'm not sure how much I can reveal to you. No, no, you know I can button up. Okay, buddy, here's what I'll give you. When I floated a couple of feelers about your Dr. Baron chef and his wife right after you called me, the roof fell in. And no seconds flat, I was on the carpet to know just what was my interest in Dr. Baron chef. Why? Because the good doctor is not dead. What? He's here in this country. He has been for the last three years. But his, his wife said he'd been dead for years. He was reported dead because he escaped from prison camp. He was never tracked down because our boys smuggled him out. Out of Siberia? How in the... That's something neither you and I are about to find out. Anyway, Harry, they finally got him here. And the last thing anyone wants to leak out... Is that we've got him. Well, is he working on this cloning business for us? Out of gas, yes, and other biological areas. Were you able to get to him, Jim? Yes. Can you get me to him? I'm going to do better than that, old buddy. I'm going to bring him to you. Well, how? Where? How much baggage have you got? Just an overnight case. Good. You check out of your hotel at 9 p.m. tonight sharp. <laughs> Go up 18 at Connecticut and start walking north. You'll be picked up by a plain black sedan. How will I recognize you? I'll be in the front seat with the driver. You'll get in the back with the doctor. You'll be there? Where are you taking us? We're taking you home. And on the way, the doctor has some things to say to you, and, and he wants to see his wife. Jim, I can't believe this. I mean, if he's so top secret, 
How are you going to smuggle him out? Well, two reasons. When he heard about his daughter and what the wife was trying to do, he went berserk. That's one reason me and an armed guard are going along. To keep him from throttling her. The brass is allowing him to go for two reasons. He laid it flat on the table, Harry. If they didn't allow him to, he'd stop all experiments. What's the other reason? The one thing his wife must not know. He's dying, Harry. He's on borrowed time. The brass are human, too. And they found out from him what a monster this woman is and the other circumstances. They gave him this one night. What other circumstances? I'm going to let Dr. Baranchev tell you the whole story himself. And she wrote and told you that your daughter was dead all those years ago? It was the only letter I ever received from her in all my years in prison. Perhaps there were others. This one they let through because they thought if I knew my daughter was not alive, uh, I would come back to try some of their filthy, unnatural experiments. It was because I refused to do them that they put me away to begin with. But if she was in prison herself, how could she... She was never in prison. She never returned to Russia. Let me explain about this woman... I was a doctor locked in my experiments and not very wise about the women. And I was not so young, nearing 40. But she was young, 18. But make no mistake, Natasha was a woman, one of the world, by the time she was 12. Well, we had an affair. It was very flattering, this beautiful young woman. For she was beautiful. She still is, incredibly. She wanted to be my wife. But what was I, a doctor of research, married to my laboratory and my experiments? What was I to do with a wife? So, since she could not get me any other way, she became pregnant. Pregnant? You mean it's it's not true? Susan is not a... Oh, Mr. Kemp, the girl you have brought up so lovingly as your daughter is not plastic. She is not, how shall we say, a bionic robot, a test tube simulacrum of a human being. She is what she is, by all your accounts, a happy, healthy, well-adjusted and beautiful child. (laughs) Just the daughter I would have wanted. I wish you could have been with her as she was growing up. You would have been very proud. I am proud. Even second hand, and only hear it. All those terrible years mourning that lost baby. If I could have only known she was alive. We did our best, Sarah and I, but it was because of Susan who was worth it all. I married Natasha because of that child. I was, what is the word, uh, irked. I did not want either marriage or a child. But when... Katerina, uh, forgive me, Susan came. It was a whole new world for me. They were forcing me, urging me, threatening me then to produce this in a laboratory, asking me to create my fellow man to fly in the face of God. I would not and I could not. I know the consequences of refusal. I had to protect my baby. I was able to make arrangements for them to flee by leaving myself as hostage. But didn't she have any money? Why would she have offered the baby for adoption? With me in prison for perhaps the rest of my life. What did Natasha care for the child she had born? It had only been a means to an end. How much did you pay for her? Ten thousand dollars. A little better than 30 pieces of silver. For enough money, Natasha would do anything. If she wasn't in prison, what was she doing all these years? From man to man, as long as they would support her and not tie her down. 
Then I suppose this smart, dishonest lawyer who saw with her a gold mine in the idea of a child made by cloning. I was dead, she thought. No possibility of argument from me. The remarkable resemblance you tell me about, the news we read today, the time seemed right. Well, how are you going to stop her? Oh, do not be afraid. I have ways to stop her. And uh, there are many tests, but one alone will suffice. Do you know your daughter's blood group? My daughter? Oh, my dear man, what claim do I have on her anymore? <laughs> do you know it? Yes, yes, it's type O. And the RH factor? Negative. Natasha's blood is AB, RH positive. And my blood here. What is this? A blood specimen certified, which you can have tested. It is my blood, and it is O, RH negative. That is proof enough without any other test that your Susan was my child and that there was no possibility she could have been cloned. Thank heaven the specter will never have to be raised for her. You'll want to see her? I will want to. But it is better for all that I don't. I leave her to you and your good wife and to the boy she is eventually to marry and to the business of making children with a man, yes. <laughs> but with God's will, the other is unthinkable. The miracle of birth is too close to the Almighty for man to ever temper with. If we are to be anything, we must be made in his image. There is another side to the process of cloning that must not be forgotten. In the vegetable world, it has brought us many miracles in plant and grain growing that have been of untold benefit to mankind. In the field of medicine, the possibility of regrowing lost limbs, new eyes for the blind, and of duplicating vital functional organs makes cloning a worthy object. So the study continues. Where will it lead us in the end? I'll be back shortly. I want that sinus medicine. Headache tablet? No, it relieves headache and congestion, internal sinus pressure, and post-nasal drip. And it has added strength. You mean added strength sign-off. Exactly. Added strength sign-off tablets give you pure aspirin plus 50% more sinus drainer. To help sinus pain while you drain. Right. And more sinus drier for post-nasal drip. Added strength sign-off. The sinus medicine in the bright red box. Take when needed, only as directed. S-I-N-E-O-F-F. Sign-off. Susan Kemp is Susan Randolph now. More than that, she's a mother. No danger of cloning here. His name is Samuel and he's all boy. Natasha was never seen or heard from again. And Susan was only too glad to forget a woman she had never seen. Sarah and Harry are her beloved mom and pop. Recently, Dr. Baranchev died very quietly. He never saw his daughter, but he died with her name on his lips. Her American name. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Carol Titel, Barbara Somers, Betsy Beard, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.